Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Southern Lunkers Fishing. Of course, I'm Chris. And today we're gonna do is something a little different. I hadn't went over anything in my boat before. However, um, coming off the tournament win I had this past weekend uh, with the Montgomery County Bass Club, I had a couple moments out there on the water that I really appreciated some of the accessories in my boat. So what I'm gonna do for y'all guys today is kinda lay out some of the accessories that I have in my boat that and it don't even have to be tournament related. It can be just to make you more efficient while you're out on the water, that makes your time spent on the boat out fishing where you're not hassling with your gear, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, and you just get to enjoy fishing. Those little, those small accessories that you buy for anything from, you know, it might be 99 cents to 10, 15 bucks, but having it in the boat is vital to just that peace of mind and just making your day go a whole lot smoother on the water. So uh, stay tuned guys. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna go over some of the accessories I carry in my boat. And this is not any set in stone or anything. You might carry something different in your boat that is you know, beneficial to you in whatever way. And I wanna hear that. I wanna hear it in the comments. I wanna see the different type of stuff that y'all are carrying that I might not, that might be beneficial to me when I go out on the water. Because there's a lot of little small things that people might implement or this and that and other that is beneficial to them because of what they do on the water, this and that and other. However, a lot of the stuff I have laid out here, it works for me and I'm pretty sure that my accessory pile will end up getting a whole lot bigger um, over time. With that being said, some of these things I said, you know, out on, your, out on the water to make your time more enjoyable and it might be prep prior to going out on the water. So let's just jump right in and I'm gonna start grabbing stuff because I got a big pile of stuff and we'll just kinda go over it and let's see where we're hitting on this. Uh, first thing, well, I'll do this very easy. Glasses. Normally, I wasn't going to mention this at all. However, um, enjoyable on the water, right? Did I not say in my last video, talking about my rough time on the water on Old Hickory when mine flew off the boat and I ended up having to drive in the rain uh, at 40 mile an hour of the pouring rain, that don't work. However, I got two different pair. I got a um, gray lens and then I got a amber lens. Uh, the gray lens I use on generally uh, brighter days, uh, it works well in all situations. And then when I got a little bit of um, overcast or I'm fishing a little bit shallower, I go with the amber lens. Um, generally speaking, I fish the I Surrender brand. I got that from Tactical Bison. Uh, I'm, I, I enjoy them. I don't have no issues with them. Uh, this pair I have right here, I, I think it's a cheap pair of Ikes because I lost those I Surrender and I'm waiting on those to come in from where they were back ordered and stuff. But uh, other than that, that's where I go with my glasses and I ain't gonna speak too much else on that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see here, where do we go next? Uh, I'll go with these because they're two different two things but they're two and one and the same, right? You need your sniffs, whether it's cutting the line. A lot of people cut their line with their teeth, I don't do it. I just, I ain't got sharp teeth or there's an issue, I don't know. Um, these are my buddy Jason's, I had to borrow them because I was missing these, couldn't find them, found them under my seat of my boat. But um, I also have the split ring in this one too. So I use it for both, whether it's removing hooks from fish, whether it's cutting braided line, anything. And that's why I have these. Now these are not fishing equipment. You're not gonna find these out down at any fishing aisle or anything. I actually got these at Hobby Lobby. The reason I like them is they're Fiskers. And uh, they stay super sharp, man. And uh, I use them. I've never had any issues with them. They, they cut braid, they cut any type of line, no issues whatsoever. It don't fray, it don't do anything. And that's just my choice. Now I wouldn't go with these again. And if I did go with these again, I'd find one that kind of has a cover. Cause sometimes if I'm fishing real quick, I'll throw these in my pocket. And the last thing you want to do is grab that thing, reach in your daggone pocket. Cause it's pretty sharp on the tip too. However, I keep them both handy uh, because I use them throughout the day multiple, multiple times. And that's just, that's just something that I use. Y'all might have a different brand. These right here are Mustad. I ain't even for sure what my buddy Jason's are. These are Streamworks. I ain't, I ain't even really for sure. They work out when I'm out on the water. Not really my type of style, but they get the job done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so always keep you a pair of pliers because you never know when you're gonna need them. Uh, let's see here, moving on. Hook sharpener, all right? Um, I don't use this so much during fishing because generally speaking, when I'm tying up the night before, I sharpen all my hooks. 
Uh, if I hadn't changed out my hooks, I used the pliers once again, changed the split rings, changed the hooks, um, and put new hooks on if I have them. If I have the right sizes, I can't stay super stocked up in all the sizes, but if I got the sizes, I'll change out the hooks if the hooks are kind of dull. If not, anytime. Anytime I'm tying on a new Texas rig or anything with a uh, EWG hook or a, a straight shank hook or anything like that, it never hurts. And unless it's the troll cars, I usually don't troll cars, but any other hook that I have in my boat, uh, as soon as I tie it on, I'll grab the file and I'll sharpen it a little bit. You, you always want the sharpest hook available that you have. And that's what I tend to do. Moving on to the next thing, super glue. Uh, you know there's times when you're fishing those Ned rigs, you're fishing those shaky heads, you're fishing swim baits. Um, the lure keepers that they have on a lot of these hooks, they might not be the best in the world. Some of them work good, some of them don't. And especially when you're messing with that Elastec, um, those things are really hard to keep on, uh, on a hook. So I always keep that super glue on there. It also comes in handy if I'm fishing a wacky rig or anything, and a lot of times right there at the o-ring or anything those sinkos they'll split depending on what brand you're using i use the strike king elastic i like those uh, my buddy uses of course the gary yamamoto uh with those i mean they'll tend to just break in half now you can fish them for a little bit longer but skipping them through a uh, brush or just skipping them in general and just kind of being rough with them around the water they're going to break and that's not counting even the fish that you catch on them. You start catching fish on them and they're going to go a whole lot quicker. And you can drop a dab of super glue on them and glue them back together when they rip in half or anything like that. So that super glue, it is essential. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. Oh, real magic. Increases casting distance, reduces line memory, right? Uh, everybody has their own thing, what they choose to use. I heard that KVD stuff is really good. There's another one on Tackle Warehouse that uh, the reviews rave about. I've been using this Real Magic for the last couple of years, and to me, it's amazing. It, I, I will come out uh, the night prior when I'm rigging up, rigging up all my rods for the next morning, and I'll give them a good dose of this stuff right here. And then as soon as I get out and put the boat in the water the next morning, when I pull my rods out, I spray them one last time and that does me throughout the day. Uh, it takes a lot of that memory out of it and just generally much better castability. Now, as far as distance, I can't speak on the distance. I can't, I can't tell you how much it's gained me here or there because I do it every time because I've got so used to it because just the memory alone, if you don't do something, if you don't stretch your line, if you don't do something to create if, if you just don't go away from having the memory in your line, if you don't do something to negate that, um, you're going to have to deal with it. I don't like doing it. I like my line when I throw it out on glass water that it's just sitting flimsy on top of the water. Or it sinks and it's a straight line, no issues. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I use. I use that Real Magic. You can get it anywhere. Academy, Bass Pro. Uh, I don't know if they got it on Tackle Warehouse. They might have it on Tackle Warehouse. But it does a good job, and it's not that much. Seven, eight bucks, and it, it does the trick. Uh, let's see here, moving on. Oh, I'll go over these. So, these right here, and these are something new I've been trying for the last month or so, and they do come in handy. They're made by Rapid, both of them are. But this one right here, and I don't know, it depends on the lighting you're in and this and that and the other, but I hate when I spool up a new reel and I'm having to run the line through my guides and I'm sitting there trying to pay attention, making sure my line's not going around the rod or making sure I'm actually putting it through the eye. And, I mean, I got great eyesight, so I can only imagine how hard it'd be for somebody that has poor eyesight. But uh, I grabbed these up from Tackle Warehouse and all it does is it just snags on the end of your line, clips on the end of your line real easy. It's bright yellow. You can't like, there's no way that you can't see that. And you can line a rod within seconds really quick and the ones that i bought here because i wasn't for sure because I, I have some i have a couple rods that have the micro guides and i didn't see really the understanding of buying the bigger ones that are for the normal size guides i just went ahead and bought the one that's for the micro guides and it works for both and i can see it just fine and it works fine the other thing i have from rapid is these line clips and I don't know if anybody's experienced it or they do this, but I have a bad habit of taking my rods. You get through with a fishing trip, the last thing you want to do is put your fishing gear up, right? But you have, you have to square your boat away. You have to put your stuff up. 
and one of the things that I have a habit of doing, when you come off the water or you finish up with a rod and you go to lay that rod down, what do you do? You clip your bait on and you set it down. Well, if you store your rods like that and it's a week, two weeks, three weeks before you're gonna be back out on the water, now I generally go every, every weekend. So it might not be as bad on my line, but uh, for people that might go a couple weeks in between getting to go, that kink right up at the top eye where your line comes across is very bad for your fluorocarbon and monofilament, not for braid. I mean, uh, if you're doing braid to leader, and I do braid to leader on 90% of my stuff, but I make sure my leader is no longer than my rod. Or my leader will be, you know, two or three inches down from the top of my eye down to uh, where I clip my uh, bait, whether it be on the reel itself, which I try not to do that at all, or I'll use the bait clip wherever it's out on the rod. And that's how long my leader is. That's what I base it off of. And then the braid, you don't have to worry about it. It can it can roll over the top and nothing. But if you're using fluorocarbon or mono, and it sits like that for an extended amount of time, it creates weakness in your line. And I had it happen the last time I was out. Within the first 15 minutes of me being on the water, I uh, I hooked a, uh, I'd say it's probably a good three, three and a half pound largemouth. And I, uh, when I set the hook, because I seen him do it right by the boat, he was 15 feet from the boat, and when I set the hook, it snapped right at the kink. Uh, and it was it was just my fault. And you know, the thing is, is a lot of people might not want to use these, but what they do is they clip on the end of your line, and you just reel them up. You reel them up, put them on the end of your uh, line, reel it all the way up to the thing, and it sits perfectly inside that top eye, and your line's straight down to your reel. Spray your reel with some reel magic, and move out store them that way and then you know because everybody has a bad habit of not retying the next time they go out anyway this is kind of a forcing function for that it'll make you retie why because you took all your baits off to put these things on now is it a little annoying yeah but the last thing i want to do is go out and have a three and a half pounder on the other end of my line and i set the hook and i had weakness in my line just because i got lazy and i chose not to retie or I chose to leave my rod stored like that for an extended amount of time waiting on the next tournament to come up and just not doing anything about it. I'd rather have that uh, confidence in my line, my reel, my rod that it's going to execute <laughs> anytime I set the hook on a fish and I ain't going to have any issues. It's not something, it, it, if I lose that fish, it's because that fish beat me. It's not because I chose not to prepare myself and my gear to the best of my ability to put that fish in the boat. And that's just another thing that I use. You can get them on Tackle Warehouse. And I'll link, I'm gonna link everything down below. Um, a majority of this stuff I get from Tackle Warehouse, I order there on the regular. I'm a normal customer on there. Uh, I get some stuff from Bass Pro, but a majority of this stuff you can get on Tackle Warehouse. I got something else that I'm gonna show y'all at the end that I kinda use, it's kinda cool. I don't, I don't know how many people's using it, but I got it from Amazon. Um, moving on, lure retrievers. Now, I have a couple different ones. These right here, non-painted. I got them from the, uh, I forgot what it was. The, it was a fishing expo up in Knoxville. I went up there and met Bass Geek. Uh, these wasn't at his booth or anything, but they were at another guy's booth and I thought I'd try them out, but they're lure retrievers. Now that one's like, um, I'd say that one's something like a half ounce. It's no longer than about an inch long, about an inch long. And you just spiral your line onto those things, slide it right down. But then I got these off Tackle Warehouse, and I like these. These are three for like four bucks. And when I tell you I've saved hundreds upon hundreds of dollars of lures with these things right here, I have. Now, I lose some, but like I said, you get three of them for five bucks. It is well worth the investment when you're throwing $12, $18 crankbaits out there, uh, and you snag one on a limb or on a rock at the bottom, and unless you're willing to jump in eight foot of water and go down and get it, you're gonna lose that bait. So you gotta have something, right? Now these, primarily, I use these right here in shallower water. Um, these are great for shallower water. And when I say that, I say 10 foot or less. Um, or generally lighter, lighter rigs. If I'm fishing anything half ounce or less, anything like that right there, I will go with these. These, these tend to work better and I will stick with these. And I keep one in my pocket at all times. Uh, the minute, and I've lost some of these, like I said, you, you get in snags that you just can't get out. But those right there are really good. Um, and they're cheap, they're affordable. Uh, now, as far as getting to my deeper diving cranks, and you're fishing a little bit deeper, your heavier ones, uh, your more expensive swim baits like your Huddlestons or 
uh, some of that stuff, right? I go with, I call him Rocky. He's something hound on Tackle Warehouse, right? Now I lost, I tied a piece of 550 cord to the end of him, so he's a little bit different. This one, it clips onto your line and you just let it go. These right here, you run your line through and it's sitting in there. But what you do is you tie you a piece of line, nylon, rope, anything to this. I choose to use 550 cord because I keep thousands of yards of it around the house, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I call him Rocky because Rocky's my dog's name. So uh, that's Rocky, my lure retriever, right? And he works great. He works better on like the 8XDs, the 10XDs, where you're running those things 18, 20 foot deep. And you take that thing, slot it on, and you just hold whatever you use. I, I won't even, generally, I won't even roll the 550 cord up. On hey guys, sorry about that. Um, my GoPro overheated. Um, so if anybody messes with a GoPro, does some videotaping this and that and other, I'd have been videotaping for 15 minutes. I grabbed that thing after it kicked off on me and uh, it was super daggum hot. So uh, if y'all have this issue or anything, tell me what y'all do to combat it. Cause I sure as heck don't want that happening when I'm out on the water. I don't want to stop fishing for that happening. If y'all have issues with your GoPro overheating, put some comments down below. Let me know what the issue is. Uh, now back to what I was saying. 18, 20 foot of water, your 8XDs, 10XDs, this is great. Uh, I just keep my 550 cord lined up in my hand, drop that thing and let it run out of my hand. Uh, I might eventually end up connecting it to something, but generally I don't because this thing runs fairly freely. Um, and I hadn't had a plug yet that gets stuck down 18, 20 foot of water where it didn't come free when I was using that right there. And that was great. Um, I don't want to do that one yet. This one's, this one's one of my, I say secret ones. I love it. Uh, oh, let's see here. Measuring board, right? You got to have it. You see, I got a huge one. That's for the lunkers that I be catching. Big ones. I only go after big ones. If I catch the small ones, it's fun. You know what I'm saying? But I like to have those big ones. Um, so I got the big one. The one thing I don't have for it yet is I don't have the mount. I gotta, still got to purchase the mount. Um, but that's something as a tournament angler you got to have, especially when you go to these different lakes and you're not going to catch big fish. You're, you're going to go there and you're going to put a limit in the boat of uh, 5, 12, 13 inches. And you know what I'm saying? You're going to catch a lot of fish at 11, 10 and a half, 11 inches. Uh, and it just happens. Um, next, markers. You see, I got a plethora of them. Uh, with that being said, I got a couple of regular Sharpies. Those are for my braid. I also have, and my buddy that brought this up and made me feel like a dummy, but I purchased the braid line markers, right? And he's like, why don't you just buy a big head Sharpie and uh, cut the slit in the middle? So that's what I'm gonna do next time. Instead of spending the money, I, I don't remember how much these were. I think they were five, six bucks. And they last forever and they are really good. I will say that they are great markers for marking up your braid on the end of your leader. Um, and I usually run two to three feet, you know what I'm saying? And they work great comparative to a regular Sharpie. Now, if I get the fatter Sharpies and cut a slit in it, they might work just as well. Um, but regular Sharpies, they'll do the job. You just gotta work a whole lot harder. These right here, I just one solid streak run it as I'm twisting the line and it marks the whole line up and I'm done. Uh, my other ones, these are a little bit different. Now y'all heard me mention that I use the Strike King Elastec for my wacky worms. And I have some other ones. I have some Z-Man, I have stuff like that right there. Well, as y'all know, y'all can't use, and that's my next thing after that, y'all can't use JJ's Magic on that stuff. It'll melt it. So I keep these markers in the boat. I got chartreuse and I got pink. Uh, both of them work really well. And that's what I use for marking up my Elastec. Um, it enables me to take a green pumpkin black flake and add a little bit of chartreuse to it if I get in a little bit more stained water. You know what I'm saying? It allows me to add some color to my wacky worms right around the hook so the fish can concentrate on right where they see that color at. And uh, it makes for putting more fish in the boat, or at least my confidence level tells me it helps me put more fish in the boat. So those are, those are something else. Now my next one, and this is a little box I put together, right? You wanna have a little box, all right? And I think I got this idea from Fluke Master, kinda. Um, but what it is, it holds my JJ's magic, right? Um, what I ended up doing is I went to Hobby Lobby, and I don't know if y'all can see that. There we go, like right there. Uh, I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought some mattress memory foam. I bought like a three foot by two foot piece of it, right? And uh, I brought it home, measured it out, cut the piece out, and you can cut it a little bit big. That way it fits down in the box real snug. This box came from Walmart. It's one of their outdoor something other boxes. 
Uh, I think it was seven, eight bucks. Um, cut the foam out, put it down in there. But then what I done is I took markers and I set the JJ's Magic on top of them. And I just marked the thing and then I took a razor blade and just cut and just cut and just cut. I tried it with a, uh, a hole saw. Didn't work, it just destroyed the, uh, it destroyed the foam just like that. And no matter how hard I pressed to try to press it down, nothing, you're not gonna get one of those perfect holes. So just take a razor blade, cut it eight, 10 times around, pull it out, it's good to go. And those bottles, as you can see, are snug. Now, these bottles have to sit upright. They're pressurized, right? So when you open them, they release pressure, right? But they hold in there. And then what I use, I use a baby dropper. I carry that in here. Now, what I need to do is I need to get another one because the chartreuse, it's very bad, right? But um, what I do is I drop my baby dropper down in there, suck it up, and then I lay my bait over here on the side. Lay my bait right here on the foam or on the box lid, and uh, I just drip it on there where I want it because I, I try to go very minimal with my stuff and right now I got clear I got chartreuse and I got I think I got my thylate yeah I got my thylate in there uh, my thylate works good on green pumpkin if nobody knows that my thylate on green pumpkin and watermelon um, it don't turn it red it turns it a brownish color so it works real good on your creature baits and your crawl baits as of giving a little bit more of that springtime color so that's what I do now. Like I said, you can't use this on the last eight. You can't use this on the Strike King or the Z-Man. However, any of your other baits, uh, any other bait that is not that elastic, you can use that on it. That is great, right? Um, the other one, where is it at? Oh, this is also scented too. This is what I consider my scent. However, I do another scent, right? You can't use this on the last tech. You can't use this on uh, Strike King once again right so when it comes to the color I use the markers when it comes to the stank I use procure now this stuff is absolutely amazing this is literally ground up crawfish and it's a thick gel it's super sticky now I don't mind getting on my hands because it kind of masks the side of my hands you gotta wash your hands with it when you get home carry a towel we in there squirt a little bit on your bait take your finger rub all over your bait and go to fishing It'll stick to it and over time it'll mold into it and it'll work very good. This thing I've been putting on baits for the last month, I guess, and I have used very little of it. It is great. Now, the last thing I got from my accessories, and I've saw a couple of videos on Facebook as of late, and uh, it's, we all have trouble with bait casters, right? I'm not saying, you know, I'm great with a bait caster. I've got very good. And then on top of that, uh, in my arsenal right now, I have three, no, four, four Corrado DCs. That's the digital. Uh, it controls all itself. You're not gonna get a backlash, right? You, you can you can set that thing on four and you can skip a ounce jig across the water and it won't backlash any. You, you just don't have issues with backlash with those. And that's why I love those things. There's very minimal setting. More time to be fishing, less time to be fiddling with stuff in your boat, right? However, not all my rods have those. At $250 a piece, I can't afford to put it on 20 rods. So I have a, a couple of the 13 Fishing Concept Cs. I have my, my Abu Garcia Revo Winch, which is on my crankbait rod, which I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if y'all have not tried that Revo Winch, it's, I think it's five, four uh, to one gear ratio. Absolutely amazing crankbait reel absolutely amazing now it'll hold 300 yards so you better be ready to put some backing on it whether it be braid or monofilament however that is a workhorse of a crankbait reel and i love it now am i going to try something a little bit different on my next crankbait rod yeah but i like trying new things however we were talking about backlashes right i got two of them for that reason one stays in my pocket one stays in the boat because i need another one uh you get those backlashes now some birds nests you're not going to get out of no matter what you do right it's just not gonna happen however I'll tell y'all what I do and it works I would say eight times out of ten now, I might have to fiddle with them a little bit more I say eight times out of ten eight times out of ten I can have a backlash out in 20 seconds or less as long as I got this thing in my pocket right all I do is generally what happens is your line will fold over on top of the other line and that's what causes the backlash because it'll pull tight but what it does is when it folds over once you realize you have that backlash, if you'll take your line and you'll pull it tight, now make sure uh, it's locked, pull it tight to where you can see where the lip is at, where the little loops are at. And you'll have one, 
or if you'll have three or four. Now braid does a little bit different and braid's very easy to get out to. Braid's easier. But braid, the only issue is, is it'll wind within itself. And that's how you get a lot of those backlashes. But generally speaking, braid's pretty easy to get out. It's those fluorocarbon backlashes that I have trouble with and everybody else has trouble with, right? So, with that being said, these little picks, man, I got one, I got this one from Bass Pro and I think I ordered this one off Tackle Warehouse. But they got a little, they got a little loop in them, right? I'll take my line and I'll pull it tight and you'll see those three little loops that's laying over your line that's running out of your reel, right? And I'll just grab the... Oh. All right, sorry guys, it happened again. I had to cool the GoPro down. But back to what I was saying, these things are amazing, right? They will get almost any bird's nest as long as it's not massive you ain't blown the whole reel out um, they will generally get them out as long as you have your set and set right they do what they're supposed to do and they are vital in my boat I will not go out on a boating trip and not have these um, like I said pull your line tight until you see the two or three loops one two three whatever it may be across it and it's so easy to grab it I, I ain't got no fingernails <laughs> I've had Crystal sit down in a boat one time so I can keep on fishing and she pulled one out. It took her about 20 minutes. Um, but she ended up getting a bird's nest out of it. But uh, sometimes it can't be helped and my fingers are not cutting it. And this little pick can grab it from anywhere on the reel. No issues whatsoever. So uh, that is vital. But I, I tell everybody, if there was only two accessories I could have in the boat, forget all this dye, forget the stain, forget the braided forget everything I don't even need the pliers you give me a lure retriever and you give me the pick and that's the two things I would have in my boat and I would make sure that I did not leave home without them whatsoever right now there are other accessories you need with your boat and they're given you know what I'm saying and some of this stuff might be given to you it might be uh, I'm, I'm probably not telling y'all nothing y'all don't already know but these are the these are the tools that I choose to take out on the water with me that make me more efficient and effective out on the water, at least I feel they do. Um, like I said earlier, down in the comments, put what y'all use. Tell me what y'all use that I might need to add to my arsenal, and I'll take that back. I got one more thing. Uh, but, you know, a, oh, what is it? Um, a transom saver. Don't, don't own a bass boat and not have a transom saver. I don't have to tell y'all that get one get a good one they got a heavy duty one that i bought off amazon that i absolutely love and it's not the ones that's got the brackets on it that move back and forth because i snapped that one the one that came with the boat it snapped and i don't know if it's because of the weight and the bounce on the motor i'm not really for sure you know what i'm saying and then get y'all some good wax to wax your boat and stuff with but that's not that what that wasn't really my goal it, this was more geared toward uh rods and reels and um lure accessories however i got one more to show y'all and this is pretty cool I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm a country boy, and this thing is Japanese as all get out, right? It is a, a Daiichi Seiko, I think is the name of it. I got it off Amazon, right? Um, I saw it listed on there two different ways, so make sure if you end up going and getting one of these uh, that you pay attention, because there's one that is prime, and you can get it in a week. There's another that is straight from Japan that it'll take you the reviews even say it was like three months before they ended up getting the thing oh obviously don't go with that one however what the thing is right here i told y'all 90 percent of my rods are braid to leader except my crankbait rods 90 percent of my rods are braid to leader right um what this does is this ties the fg9 i'm going to do a video probably in the next upcoming weeks on the fg9 and how to tie it on this however uh tying the fg9 before it's a pain on the boat but it's a pain in general just doing it prepping to go out on the water. Um, this thing makes it super easy. And you see how small it is. It's not that, it's not that big. This thing is absolutely amazing. It ties my FG knot. I can tie FG knot. I say it ties it. It pretty much does tie it for you. You got to do all the work, but it, it's really not that much work. And I can tie a FG knot in I've saw videos where they say they can do it in 60 seconds or two minutes or whatever. I can tie a solid FG knot in about three and a half minutes, and that's not bad. That's out on the water, and that's very good. And ever since I bought this thing, before, I would have one in every, we'll say, five or six FG knots fell on me. And a lot of people I talk to, their FG knots fell. I have yet to have an FG knot fail using this thing right here. And to me, it is the thinnest diameter 
uh, attachment from braid to leader that can run through your guides no issues and you don't have any issues with it when I tell you this thing is amazing this thing is amazing and I'll vouch for it if, whoever if anybody else is using it if y'all ain't read any reviews on it I hadn't found a whole lot of reviews on it but I chose to take a chance on it and I think it's like 30 bucks but to me it was well worth the 30 bucks I paid for it right and that is the last thing that was one of my secret things that I don't think a lot of people are actually using some people might use other stuff or some people might just tie with the bow and the rod and them holding their teeth I don't know however guys that's what I got for accessories like I said in the comments below put what you use show me tell me what you use because I'll probably I might end up adding it to my arsenal if I feel that it's beneficial to me while I'm out on the water um, I'm glad I got to do another video for y'all. I'm, I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, I had a field exercise and I had some other things going on and I had that tournament this past weekend so I really hadn't been doing too much shooting. However, um, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell guys so y'all know when my videos come out. And right now I think I'm sitting at 91 subscribers. Um, a tenth of the, almost a tenth of what I need to get. I need to get to a thousand subscribers, but uh, we'll slowly get there. We'll slowly work our way to that. And I appreciate everything, everything for y'all watching, supporting, commenting down below, supporting me and what I'm doing uh, and trying to run this YouTube channel because it's, it, it's kind of fun. I, I wish I had more time to do it.